Good morning and welcome to First Congregational Church, an open and affirming congregation of the United Church of Christ. We are so glad you could be with us this morning on this Pentecost Sunday, a special day in the life of the church. Whether you're joining us on Facebook, YouTube, or listening on the airwaves through WGCH 1490, we are so glad you could be with us this morning. Please know that no matter who you are or where you are on your journey of faith, you are welcome and you are loved. Um, just a couple of quick announcements this morning. If you like to follow along at home with a paper copy or even just a digital copy of our bulletin, we do have those available on our website for you to follow along. The uh, words to the hymns are printed in there and all the prayers. So if you have any trouble seeing them on the screen, you can print them off at home uh, ahead of time as well. We usually publish those on our website on Friday night. And if you like what the message that we are putting out here at First Congregational Church during this time, we invite you to like all of our pages, our YouTube, our Facebook, and our Instagram. Subscribe to them and share them far and wide with your friends and your neighbors and anyone you think who might use, a, who could use a message of hope and love and peace during this time. Um, one of the ways that we continue this ministry, this creative ministry that we have at First Church, the way that we can continue to do this live stream is through your support. And your support helps connect us as a community as well. And we can only do that through your generous offerings and support of all of the things we do here at First Church. So I invite you to give as abundantly and as generously as you can during this time. And there are three ways that you can give to First Church. Uh, first of all, you can mail a check to First Congregational Church. The address is there on your screen, 108 Sound Beach Avenue. We do check our mail uh, almost daily. It's either me or Craig check it every day. Um, so you can send a check in and we'll make sure we get that deposited. Uh, you can also text FCCOG donate to 73256. Uh, once you put that in, it'll take you to a secure website where you can choose to give to the church. Or you can simply go to our website at FCCOG.org and look over on the right hand side of the page and you will find a donate button. Um, so those are two secure and safe ways that you can give online to the church or you can mail a check-in. Uh, so that's all I have for announcements this morning. Again, we are so glad you could be with us this morning. I'm going to turn it over to Craig now. Oh, wait, before I do that, I almost got ahead of myself. Uh, we have a community connection this morning. So we are seeking ways to invite our neighbors and our friends who we have connections with who are frontline workers and essential workers during this time of pandemic to share some of their stories with us about what they're experiencing and how they're getting through this time. Uh, so this week we invited Sherry Shapiro, uh, the CEO of Kids in Crisis, to share a message with us. Hi, my name is Sherry Shapiro and I am the Executive Director of Kids in Crisis. I want to thank you and your congregation for all that you do for children and families throughout our community. It is during these very difficult times that these virtual hugs are even more important. And today in, in residence at Kids in Crisis, we have children as young as two years old who are with us because they or, and or their family are experiencing a crisis. Children that are homeless due to no fault of their own children whose families are really struggling um, with finances, struggling with their health and well-being, children whose behavioral or emotional problems have really wreaked havoc in the home, especially at, during these times when we're at a stay-at-home, stay-in-place situation. So Kids in Crisis needs to be here. We need to be here to answer the phone 24 hours a day, seven days a week through our helpline. We need to be here with our emergency shelter program, with our staff who are able to take care of the children who come to us 24 hours a day, seven days a week, with our school-based programs, with our medical clinic. Um, all of our services are available at no cost to children and families, and that is of the utmost important to us. Um, so as we go through these difficult times, we need to find ways to be creative, to get out there and be responsive to the needs of children and families. Our staff in the emergency shelter are frontline workers, frontline workers and essential workers like we hear about every day, people that are leaving their home 
and their families to come to Kids in Crisis and care for our children as a family in our emergency shelter. These are difficult times for us as well as an organization. We do face the crisis of the economy and what is happening to our donor base. Um, and that is really frightening to us because we care about our donors and our donors care about us. And we wanna be here today and tomorrow for all the children and families that need our help. Our services have always been available at no cost and we are going to do everything as we move forward to continue to provide those services in a loving, caring and professional way for every child and family that needs us. So being a part of this community, being a part of the fabric of the Greenwich community has really been an important part of our organization. We see volunteers who are still reaching out, bringing meals, bringing arts and crafts and puzzles and toys for our kids to do. We have volunteers that are interested in um, planting our garden with us for the summer and doing it social distancing. We have many people who are volunteers in our program who are FaceTiming with our kids um, because they cannot come in at this time. We do look forward to the day that we can get back to whatever the new normal is. And regardless of what that looks like and how it plays out for all of us, we will be here as an organization because families need us. And together as a community with congregations such as yourself and with corporations and individuals and volunteers, we will make sure that no child goes into a crisis without having the support that they need from our organization. Nobody needs to be alone during a crisis and we will make sure of that. So thank you and thank your entire community for all that you do for children. Thank you, Sherry. I, I did forget one announcement before we go to the prelude. If you happen to be watching on YouTube today, I invite you to stick around at the end of worship, at the close of worship, following the postlude and everything. Uh, we're going to give you a special tour, a behind-the-scenes tour of the meeting house. So you might want to stick around for that after the service. And that's uh, something for our YouTube viewers who I realize haven't seen anything behind the scenes. So uh, we invite you to stick around for that. I'm going to turn it over to Craig now this morning for our prelude.
please join with me now in our call to worship, the words you will find printed on your screen or if you're following along at home in your bulletin. The Spirit descends like a dove, bringing peace to unite the world. The Spirit comes like a breath, bringing life to renew the people of God. The Spirit spreads like fire, bringing energy for witnessing to the love of God. The Spirit of the living God, come to us and transform our lives by your power. Our opening hymn this morning is, There is a Spirit in the Air. And our uh, soloist this morning is Tom Woodman, and he will lead us in our singing. We invite you to sing along at home, hum along, or simply enjoy this beautiful music this morning. Will you please join with me this morning in our gathering prayer, the words you will find on the screen there. Let us join together now in prayer. In this act of prayer, O God, our lives are opened to you, and with them our world. We pray that your Spirit would whisper through every heart and every place where the voice of your presence is silent. We ask yeah, that yeah, your spirit would challenge and empower all who are weak, broken, diseased, or weeping. We long for your spirit to unite all to think, speak and live as true imitators of Christ. Make our world and all who live in it know peace, yes. healing, healing, and, and reconciliation, reconciliation with, with you and, and with, with each other. other. Through, the, Through mighty the mighty power of the, of Holy, the Holy Spirit, spirit we pray. We pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you.
not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Our children's message this morning is brought to us by our director of faith formation once again, Rosemary Lammy. I invite the children to gather around and listen to this message from her. Good morning. I've been thinking about this children's message for a long time. Actually, I thought it was going to be easy. A short story about one thing, one event. Two or three symbols, done. But the more I prepared, the more complicated it became. And I couldn't seem to make it simple, which is always my goal. So let's see where this took me. Pentecost is often referred to as the birthday of the church. But that's actually the end of the story. For me, it begins with something I learned at a young age. God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Ghost. Wait, ghost? That seemed a little scary to me. When I got older, it seemed better to think about the Holy Spirit. To me, the Holy Spirit is inspiration, courage, strength, and unity but I'm going to leave the unity idea to Patrick because I think that's going to be his message today. So now to that short story. After Jesus' resurrection, he told his disciples that he would be leaving them to return to his Father, but that God would send the Holy Spirit to be with them and help them. Jesus said the Holy Spirit would empower them to continue to spread his good news. So the disciples were all together celebrating the Jewish festival of Pentecost, which was actually like our Thanksgiving. There were many people in Jerusalem, as there always were for these celebrations. Little did the disciples know that this was the day God chose to send the Spirit who did not sneak in quietly and descend upon each of them like a warm, fuzzy blanket. Oh no, the Holy Spirit made quite an entrance with the loud sound of blowing wind and the appearance of flames above the disciples' heads. So those are the symbols, the wind, the flame. And there's also a dove. So the wind can be the breath of God, which equips each one of us to serve others. The flame I think of as the passion of God, which gives us the courage to overcome the things that make it difficult to serve. And then there's the dove which inspires God's love for each and every one of us. 
When the people of Jerusalem came to find out what all the commotion was about, they discovered the disciples talking about God. The strange thing was that the disciples were speaking in many different languages. Each person who showed up heard the disciples speaking in his or her own language. Then Peter began to preach and remind people of who Jesus was and how he taught them about the way God loves all. The people were inspired to join together to share the good news. So they began to be baptized to express their commitment to follow in the ways of Jesus. The Bible says 3,000 people were baptized that day. And that's why we call Pentecost the birthday of the church because it was kind of like the formal beginning of Jesus' followers working together to teach his way. And that's the story of Pentecost. I want to end with a special shout out to our confirmands of 2020 who would have been, I'm sorry, who would have been confirmed today. Pentecost is a perfect day for confirmation. But of course, because we're not gathering in person to help ourselves and our neighbors stay healthy, we couldn't do it the way we wanted to today. So to our dear confirmands, we have not forgotten you, and we will return to some routine as soon as we are able. In the meantime, stay well, and remember, you are blessed. Amen. Thank you, Rosemary. Our first lesson this morning is read to us by one of our deacons, Helen Ingraham. Um, I invite you to listen to the first lesson now by Helen. The first lesson this morning is from Peter chapter 3, verses 8 through 17. Finally, all of you be of one mind, sympathetic, lovers of your fellow believers, compassionate, and modest in your opinion of yourselves. Don't pay back evil for evil or insult for insult. Instead, give blessing in return. You are called to do this so that you might inherit a blessing. For those who want to love life and seek good days should keep their tongue from speaking evil and their lips from speaking lies. They should shun evil and do good. Seek peace and chase after it. The Lord's eyes are on the righteous and his ears are open to their prayers. But the Lord cannot tolerate those who do evil. Who will harm you if you're zealous for good? But happy are you even if you suffer because of righteousness. Don't be terrified or upset by them. Instead, regard Christ the Lord as holy in your hearts. Whenever anyone asks you to speak of your hope, be ready to defend it. Yet do this with respectful humility, humility, maintaining a good conscience. Act in this way so that those who malign your good lifestyle in Christ may be ashamed when they slander you. It is better to suffer for doing good, if this could possibly be God's will, than doing evil. Our solo this morning is a piece by Hall Johnson. It's titled, Every Time I Feel the Spirit. It will be performed by, Craig, or by, performed by Tom Woodman and accompanied by Craig Simmons on the piano. <laughs> time I feel the Spirit moving in my heart, I will pray. Yes, every time I feel the Spirit moving in my heart, I will pray. mountain our Lord spoke out of his mouth came fire and smoke in the valley
valley on my knees as my Lord have mercy please yes every time I feel the spirit moving in my heart I will pray yes every time I feel the spirit moving in my heart body but not the soul all around me looks so fine as my lord if all was mine every time i feel the spirit moving in my heart i will pray yes every time i feel the spirit track runs to heaven and runs right back St. Peter waiting at the gate says come on sinners don't be late as every time I feel the spirit moving in my heart I will pray yes every time I Thank you. Our second lesson this morning is from the book of Acts, chapter 2, verses 1 through 21. You'll notice I don't have my Bible in my hand this morning because we are going to present the second lesson this morning to you in a digital format, a digital storytelling format. So, Acts 2, 1 through 21. Listen now for God's word to you. On the day of Pentecost, all the believers were meeting together in one place. Suddenly, there was a sound from heaven like the roaring of a mighty windstorm, and it filled the house where they were sitting. Then what looked like flames or tongues of fire appeared and settled on each of them. And everyone present was filled with the Holy Spirit and began speaking in other languages as the Holy Spirit gave them this ability. At that time, there were devout Jews from every nation living in Jerusalem, and when they heard the loud noise, everyone came running. They were bewildered to hear their own languages being spoken by the believers. They were completely amazed. How can this be? they exclaimed. These people are all from Galilee, and yet we hear them speaking in our own native languages, and we all hear these people speaking in our own languages about the wonderful things God has done. They stood there, amazed and perplexed, What can this mean, they asked each other. But others in the crowd ridiculed them, saying, They're just drunk, that's all. Then Peter stepped forward with the eleven other apostles and shouted to the crowd, Listen, listen carefully, all of you fellow Jews and residents of Jerusalem. Make no mistake about this. These people are not drunk as some of you are assuming. Nine o'clock in the morning is much too early for that. No, what you see was predicted long ago by the prophet Joel. In the last days, God says, I will pour out my spirit upon all people. Your sons and daughters will prophesy, your young men will see visions, and your old men will dream dreams. In those days, I will pour out my spirit, even on my servants, men and women alike, and they will prophesy, and I will cause wonders in the heavens above, and signs on the earth below, blood, and fire and clouds of smoke. The sun will become dark and the moon will turn blood red before that great and glorious day of the Lord arrives. But everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. Oh, 
Let us pray. God of all creation, hear our prayers during this hour of need. Open our hearts and our minds to your divine presence, which dwells within us all, so that we might come together to create a better world for all people. Amen. Today is Pentecost Sunday, 50 days after Easter. 50 days, which at the same time feels like it was just a week ago and is also a distant memory. In the life of First Church, at least for the last few years, as Rosemary mentioned, Pentecost Sunday has marked a day of joyous celebration, a day where we come together as a community and welcome with open arms a class of confirmands into the fullness of life and membership of this congregation and community. Typically on this day, we join with their families and we celebrate them. We celebrate them for their commitment to learn and explore their faith in a way that most of us adults don't even really do. But on this Pentecost Sunday, for obvious reasons, we will not be joining in celebration of those remarkable young people. And honestly, it's probably okay because this does not really seem much like a time for celebrations. With with all that's going on in our country right now, over 100,000 dead from COVID-19, millions of people unemployed and unsure about what their future might hold, and countless cities tearing themselves apart at the seams as people cry out for justice because the life of yet another unarmed black man, George Floyd, was ended at the hands of police officers. There is some serious tension in the air right now, and we're all trying to navigate how all of this that we find ourselves in will unfold. The anxiety and instability of the moment, it is palpable. And so it feels like this is the right time this morning to do a bit of soul searching some exploration of what it means to be here, to be spirit-led, and to be human together. And to do that, I think we need to start at the beginning, all the way back to the beginning of the known universe, roughly 13 billion years ago, give or take a couple hundred million years. So to the best of our knowledge, in the beginning, everything was gathered into one single point, and then something dramatic happened. And that single point of existence, it expanded rapidly with a white-hot intensity we can't even begin to imagine. And after what we believe to be about a 300,000-year cooling-off period, the particles that were created in that moment started to join with one another. And they created more particles. And then they joined together and they created atoms. And over time, the atoms, they decided to bond with each other and they created molecules, which bonded with other molecules of similar form and substance to create carbon, oxygen, and nitrogen, the building blocks of life. And this cycle of coming together to create new, more complex things, it happened over and over again for 13 billion years. And it continues to happen today. The universe is still expanding. Complex organisms across the lifespan are coming together, uniting, 
and creating even more new and wonderful things in our existence. But let's go back to the beginning again, to that singular point in time and space where all that was and is was together. In that point was the essence of something, the essence of something we as human beings have been trying to wrap our minds around, to define and to categorize. But we just can't seem to do that. Right? Some have called that essence the divine spark, the creator, or the great mystery, the eternal divine, the engine of the universe, or the great spirit, the Holy Spirit. And in our tradition, we name that divine force and energy God. From the very beginning, the elements of the universe were driven by this internal force, by this unseen yet obvious pulsating energy to unite, to bond with elements of similar essence and nature, to become a part of something bigger than themselves. That divine creating energy which was present at the beginning of all things, that divine spark which brought the atoms together to create molecules, to then create cells, and eventually us human beings, that spirit and that energy, it dwells inside each and every one of us. You see then, each one of us has this internal and instinctual drive, God-given drive, to unite with one another. We are hardwired by the creator of the universe itself to come together in unique ways and to be a part of something beyond our wildest imagination. And that is at the heart of it all. That is the story the universe is longing to tell. God, our creator, is pleading with us right now to wake up and see that for 13 billion years, the universe has been moving forward. Progress has been made since the dawn of time itself because all that was and is decided to bond with one another and unite to do a new thing. Take the story of Pentecost as an example. A multitude of followers of the Jesus way were gathered for a festival of their own. And the divine presence, the Holy Spirit, roared into their space with a fierce gust of wind. And individual flames seemed to alight on each one of them. And what did the Spirit do then? The Spirit brought them together. Somehow, in some way, all of those gathered in that time and that space were able to converse with one another, to share in the good news, to share and hear a vision for a better future, for a better way to be human together, united as one. The God that we know revealed to us through Jesus Christ and made known to us each and every day through the power of this Holy Spirit. This God, who we believe was and is the creator of all things, designed this whole thing with the natural forward movement. 
The whole universe and the world that we live in is meant to move forward, to progress along and look to a future that is better than the one that we have right now. And this forward movement, it is 100% reliant on our unity and that innate desire for all things to want to come together. We simply can't move forward unless we come together. And that tension, that thing we all sense in the air right now, it runs directly counter to that unitive forward movement. And that, I believe, is precisely why these last few months, and particularly this last week, has been so difficult for us. Right? Something deep within us, deep within our bones, tells us that this months on end, physical, emotional, and spiritual isolation, the feelings of loneliness and abandon, it all feels so unnatural because it is. Loneliness and separation go directly against 13 billion years of bonding, uniting, and creating together. Human beings are not meant to exist in quarantine. It's why we're talking about social distancing fatigue and seeing crowds out at beaches and along the boardwalks. We literally can't help ourselves. And even though it will be better for us in the long run to remain isolated for a bit of time, right? it's simply not how we were meant to live. And then, this week, the tension and anxiety got ratcheted up even higher as we witnessed in shocking and brutal fashion the death of George Floyd, an unarmed black man at the hands of uniformed police officers. The racist and inhumane behavior displayed by those four police officers was destructive, divisive, and it was simply toxic. The racism they displayed and I'm simply mentioning them today because they are the most recent examples. Right? There are many who have gone before them. But the racism, slavery, lynching, oppression, inequality, and the unlawful and unwarranted killing of innocent black and brown people in this country or centuries-old problems that we must now confront head-on. We, as a society, we, as people of privilege, we can no longer stand by the sides and let other people handle this problem. We must stand up against this hatred. We must find ways to walk side by side those on the margins, those with the boot of the empire on their throats, quite literally. We must act now because racism, violence, oppression, and these modern-day forms of lynching, they are not just immoral. They are not just unjust. They are not just wrong and degrading to what it means to be human. These acts of racism are leading us in the opposite direction God intended us to go. These acts of racism are directly opposed to where the universe has been headed for 13 billion years. What we are seeing play out on the streets all over this country is our failure to unite. All of us, it's all of our failures. 
And it's our failure to bond, to see beyond ourselves, and to listen to that spirit that dwells deep inside each and every one of us, to look for a better future, to look for a better way to be human together. We are not made to live like this. It goes directly against our God-given drive to connect and to bond with one another. And that is why people are taking to the streets. That is why people are standing on street corners loudly proclaiming Black Lives Matter. They are listening to the spirit within. The same spirit which showed up to the apostles 2,000 years ago. They are listening and they are fighting with all that they've got to reclaim our humanity, to make God's presence known in this world and to get us back on that pathway of natural forward movement, united and bonded together, looking to be a part of something bigger and better than what we see in our world right now. Unity. It's the only way for us to live. It's the only way for us to be human. Amen. Dear friends and family of First Congregational Church of Greenwich, UCC, it is an honor to be with you in prayer this morning, even though we cannot be together in body. I'm so glad we are connected in spirit in this way. I'm the Reverend Jack Perkins Davidson, a senior pastor of Spring Glen Church. I am also a child of First Church Greenwich. I'm grateful for this opportunity to reconnect to you all, to this church community that was the place where I grew up, was the place where I really discovered myself and my sense of call to ministry for the first time in SBF back in the early 2000s, singing on the stage and playing drums at the Easter sunrise. And so for me, this is more uh, of a ministry to me to uh, offer me this opportunity to, to be with you all and reconnect to my roots uh, in a time that feels so untethered. It's also a great reminder in this uncertain time that we are not alone, that we have each other, that we're connected to a movement, to a church, to a faith that is much bigger than any of us individually and any single church. So with all of that in mind, I invite you now to a moment of prayer. Take a moment and just feel yourself in your space and feel God's presence. Feel the spirit surrounding you as you take deep breaths in and out and focus in on that breath because that breath is God's Holy Spirit moving in and through you. Everybody breathe in and breathe out. Let us pray. Gracious God, Today we commemorate and celebrate Pentecost, the day that your spirit came swooping in like flaming tongues, 
like a rushing wind shaking the entire house. Like a descending dove. Like a bush that was aflame but not consumed. God, we need your re-energizing, reviving, resurrecting spirit right now. As the world faces this collective trauma, give us hope in your eternal grace. Give us guidance, just like you guided the Israelites through the wilderness as a pillar of smoke and fire as we try to figure out our new normal, our new world, a new way of being that is more just and more loving, as this pandemic has revealed to us the inequities in our society, help us to overturn the tables, to cry for justice and peace, justice for people like George Floyd, black man who was murdered by the Minneapolis police this week. Justice for the black and brown people of New York City who have received 81% of the citations for violating the stay-at-home order while their white neighbors are receiving support and love and masks from the very same police force. Help us to do what your Christ has called us to do, to care for the least of these. Help us to make decisions based on compassion, not profit. Empower and challenge and embolden us to feed the hungry and shelter the homeless and nurture the sick, whether it is in body or in spirit or in emotion. And as we do so, remind us that when we tend to the least of these, we are tending to your Christ. And may we have the strength to be vulnerable enough to reach out when we ourselves are in need of love and support, whether tangible or emotional or spiritual. God, I give thanks for the First Congregational Church of Greenwich, for the public witness in the flags on their lawn for the way that they are helping an entire world grieve the complex layers of mourning. Oh God, we ask that, like it says in Psalm 30, that you would turn our mourning into dancing. Help us to feel your presence in our isolation. May our faith give us hope for the future, not a passive hope, but a proactive hope. Not a hope that is waiting, but a hope that is working. A faith that allows us to be your hands and your feet in this world. Making sure everyone knows your ever-expanding, all-embracing love as embodied through your Christ, in whose name we pray. Amen. Our closing hymn this morning is Sweet, Sweet Spirit. I think once again we'll be led by Tom and Craig. We invite you to sing along at home to this beautiful hymn or simply listen along as the Spirit moves you.
A special thank you this morning once again to Craig and Tom and everyone behind the scenes to Danny and Rory and Bob. And a reminder, if you're on YouTube, at the conclusion of our service, we're going to give you a behind-the-scenes tour of uh, what, what happens here. So if you are curious about what the meeting house looks like now, we invite you to uh, stick around after the service for a little post-credit uh, tour. Um, go now with this blessing. May the Spirit of God that Holy Spirit which dwells within each and every one of us, be made known to us so that we may come together during this time in unity and love. Amen. I need your 
disorienting, maybe. Picking me coming through? All right, folks, here we are. I'm, gonna, I'm holding one of our little Mevo cameras here behind the scenes. It's a little different than holding a phone because I can't really see myself. But thank you for joining us. This is my little uh, Marvel behind the scenes footage. There's Tom. There he is. <laughs> thank you. Uh, so this is our little post credit scenes. For those of you on YouTube who haven't seen what the Meeting House looks like uh, after this pandemic hit, we turned it into a little studio. So I'm going to turn you around here. Try not to disorient you too much. Um, I can just turn it around. You don't have to look at my face anymore. All right, so what we've got here, we got a monitor here. This is where I see everything, and I have a little outline over here where I can see what's coming up next. So these are my little, uh, what they call in the business, confidence monitors. And uh, sometimes we have little glitches like during the gathering prayer where the words don't come up, but it's all good. Um, so this is, this is very important. And then you'll see, let's see if I can get a close-up shot of one of our cameras here. Uh -huh. Yep, there they are. These are little, in, or little discrete cameras that we use. They're called Mevo cameras. We have one there that I, that I look at. We have one over here. Oh, Danny's even flipping them around here. So that one gets that shot. Uh, this one, camera number one, picks up the uh, lectern. So we get shots of our soloist there. And then we, we moved this one here. The one that I have in my hand is our close-up shot. So when I preach, we put this one up here by the piano, so you can see that. And then we have one, uh, one camera over here by the piano that we move around. There you got a shot of it. Uh, we moved that one from the organ and the piano so you can see Craig play. We thought it would be nice for everyone to see Craig play. So that's, that's our setup out here, and you'll notice too, well, that was a real extreme close-up there. Uh, we've got these uh, lights that we put in, these studio lights, so I'll blind you for a second. We put them around so you don't have any shadows, so we worked hard on that. And I want to take you back to the back room where all of the magic happens. And while I'm going that way, we'll show you the, the rest of the meeting house in case you're curious. Has not changed much. Um, we actually have the seats still arranged from, I think it was Youth Sunday was the last time, well, it was the Sunday after that, March 8th was the last time we gathered in here. So. The chairs are still in that place. Danny, I'm coming back to you. I'm going to show off the uh, sound booth. So again, I apologize. I don't have my monitor in front of me, so I, I don't really know what you're seeing. But we're going to show you the... Uh, so part of this is some of the capital improvements that we made with the meeting house. This is our new sound booth. And there's Bob. Hello. He, uh, he puts everything out to the radio and makes sure that we sound good on the radio and in-house. So we appreciate that. There's our new soundboard. And uh, there's a, a tower here where we get, we get all of our power. Oh, we're getting fuzzy. Getting fuzzy, yeah. We're getting fuzzy, but there's Danny. Danny on the computer. Uh, run oh, there. Now we can see him. There he is. He's running things behind the scenes. So this is the computer that we use that we bought when the uh, pandemic hit. We're, we're freezing up back here, so I'm going to head back out here and show you the one, the one last member of our team here on most days. Sometimes when Danny has to sing, we have um, Kelly comes and does what Danny's doing. But there's Rory. I'm just waiting so I can see him. There's Rory. Rory also helps with the sound mixing, make sure that everything that's coming over the internet sounds beautiful. So we appreciate all, the, all of his work as well. So that's a little, uh, little behind the scenes tour. We thought you'd be interested in that. And uh, I hope you enjoy your Sunday. And if you're in Greenwich, enjoy the beautiful weather. And wherever you are, Know that we're, uh, we're, we're with you and we're praying for you in, in spirit and love and unity. Take care. You could give them a far shot. A far shot? Oh. I don't know if we're still on. Yep. All right. So he, Rory says, here's a, here's a far shot from behind. I see the whole thing. Okay. Rory says you want to see the whole thing. I can, we can do that. I'll go up in the choir loft. You can, get a, you can get a view of the whole thing from the choir loft looking out. You can see what, you can see what we see on a Sunday. I hope you're not getting motion sick. If Kate, if Kate, if you're home watch, oh, if you're home watching this, you might want to turn it off. She gets motion sick easy. All right, so here we go. I'm up in the choir loft. Oh, it looks like we're getting a little, little fuzzy. These cameras work on Wi-Fi signals, so if the Wi-Fi goes in and out, these cameras don't work so much. But there's a whole shot. Our little first church studio. 
All right, Danny, I think that's, that's good for now, and uh, <clears throat> we'll see you next week online. Take care, everyone.